Hello everybody, how are you? Hello everybody, how are you? It is time to start our day, it is time to work and play. Hello everybody, how are you? Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about another crop that is grown in the continent of North America, but other continents too, but it's a special crop that starts with our letter of the week this week, which is, remember, G, which says G. So it's a crop that's grown here, and it starts with the G sound, which is G. And maybe there's a hint here to help you out, but you're looking at those and you're saying, but Miss Jill, those are pumpkins. Pumpkins don't start with G. No, they don't. But pumpkins are also called gourds, and gourds starts with the letter G. So we are talking about the crop of gourds today. We see a lot of gourds used as decoration at Halloween time, so this is a good time to learn about what a gourd is. So like I said, a gourd is a crop, it is a plant. In fact, it is one of the oldest cultivated plants in the entire world. It's been around a really, really long time. And gourds are very special because they can be used for more than just food. There are gourds that we eat, like pumpkins. You can eat pumpkin or squash. And then there are gourds that are used for other things. They still grow in the ground, out of the ground, but we use them instead of for eating, we use them for other things. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. But first, do you remember way back when, when we were talking about apples, and I showed you some video from an apple farm, an apple tree farm. We saw that apples grow on trees. And a few days ago, when we were talking about the crops of North America, we looked at oranges. And did you notice that oranges grow on trees? Well, gourds don't grow on trees. They grow out of the ground. And you can see my little pumpkin patch here. They have vines that grow off of them. And we're going to read about that in a few minutes as well. And let's go back to our gourds now. Let's take a look at some of these gourds. I have a few different kinds that I want to show you because they are really cool because gourds have a lot of variety. That means there's a lot of different types of gourds, a lot of different ways to use them. They feel different, they sound different, they look different from each other. This one, I want you to take a good look at. Does it remind you of anything? Does it remind you of any kind of bird, perhaps? Maybe one we've mentioned comes from Canada that we have around here a lot of. It looks like a goose, doesn't it? it this is a goose neck gourd. You can see this would be its beak and its little head here, and then its long neck. This is a gooseneck gourd. Now this one's been around for a while, like it grew several years ago, and it's dried out now. And listen, this one is hollow. That means there's nothing inside. I'm gonna shake it, see if you hear anything. Nothing inside of that one. That one is empty. Let's try another one. Let's try this one. I don't know what this one's name is, but look at how bumpy he is. Can you see all the different ways he, protrudes the way he comes out here. He is very bumpy and he's smaller and he's different colors. So these have that that are different, but they're both gourds. So they have that the same. Now this one too is an old gourd that sat for a long time and dried out. Let's see if we hear anything when I shake this one. Can you hear that? A little bit. Gourds have seeds inside of them, like pumpkins. When you carve a pumpkin, you have to clean the seeds out. Gourds also have seeds in them. So when you let them sit over time and they dry out, the seeds are still in there and you can hear them. Now, okay, I thought this guy was kind of, had bumpy sticking out. Check out this one. Check this guy out. Doesn't he, he almost looks like something you would find in the ocean, doesn't he? Look at all his points sticking out. So, so far we have seen three gourds. We've got the biggest one we saw, the middle sized one, and now the smallest one. And they all look different, but they're all gourds. Let's hear what this one has to say to us. Ready? Mm, just a little bit of sound again. How about another bumpy one? He almost looks like a gooseneck again. I wonder if he is. Let's listen to what he says. He's shaking. He sounds a little bit different. Let's do one more. Oh, nothing inside of that one. These are all different types of gourds. So if you have some gourds for decoration at home, you can put them on a tray like I've done, or you can set them out and you can take a look at them. You can feel them. You can use your sense of touch and feel if they're smooth or bumpy, hard or soft. You can use your sense of smell and you can smell them. This does have a little bit of a smell to it. You can use your sense of hearing and listen. 
you can use your sense of taste. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd want to taste these. Maybe if there was a pumpkin pie, remember pumpkin is a gourd, that I would taste. And of course we're using our sense of sight as well. Okay, let's see, you can do, like I said, you can do lots of things with gourds. Some people paint them. These two gourds started out just like the other ones I showed you, but when they dried out, they got painted and now they can be used as a decoration all year round. Let's listen to this one because I think this one's got a louder sound. Do you remember what's making the sound inside? Anybody remember? Those are the seeds. When you dry out the, the gourd, everything else inside dries out and the seeds are just left there so you can hear them. And they sound like a maraca. You can use them as instruments. So that's one use. We have decorations, we have instruments. Let me show you this gigantic one and we'll talk about some of the uses that we can use for this guy. This guy was called a bottleneck gourd and he's already been opened. Look at the size of this. This is what he looks like. He has, he's called a bottleneck because he's got this great big bottom part and then he's got kind of a neck that makes him look like a bottle. Now, like I said, he's been opened already. Look at this, somebody cut this part off and I have it here. So you can see, it's like a puzzle almost. It goes back on there. Now, use your imagination for a moment. If you had this, let me hold it this way or this way, what could you use this for? Think about it for just a second. And like I said, use your imagination. What could we do with this? Hmm. I wonder if when we put it like this, we could use it as a bowl, couldn't we? We could put food in there and we could pass it around to our family. People used to do that and probably still do. They use it as a bowl. They would also use it for storage. They would put the top on, put something in there that they wanted to store, and then put it on a shelf, and that would be their storage. Now, if you're using this as a bowl, do you know that we could take, let's see, one of our other gourds, maybe we could cut part of him up, and we could use him as a spoon or a ladle. We could use our gourds to serve ourselves. What else, if we held it like this, Hmm, do you think somebody could live in there? Some people make bird houses out of these. Usually if you're gonna do that though, you'd have a, let's turn it this way again, you would just put a smaller hole. Birds like small holes to go in and out of. But you could use this and hang this outside in your yard in a tree and make a bird house out of it. Gourds are really very useful. What other things can you think of that you could use a gourd for? Think about it and maybe even put that down in your journal. What would you use a gourd for? Can you design your own gourd and then maybe write the letter G and have a grown-up help you write the rest of the word? I would love to see what you guys come up with. You can put it out on Facebook. What would you use your gourds for? Hmm. All right, now let's talk about one certain kind of gourd and that would be pumpkins. Pumpkins are all over the place right now. It's just a few days till Halloween. So many people have gone and picked out their pumpkins already and have them for decoration. Many people have carved them. Today, we're gonna to read a book about what's called the life cycle of a pumpkin. What that means, what the life cycle means is we're gonna find out how it begins and then what it grows into and how it keeps growing. And then eventually it will become what we know as a pumpkin. First, let me see your five. One, two, three, four, five, ready? Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are leaves in the air. Third one said, I don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went the wind and out went the lights. The five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Okay guys, this book is called It's Pumpkin Time and it's gonna take us through the life cycle of a pumpkin. Let's find out about where a pumpkin comes from and what happens when it starts to grow. All summer long, my brother and I get ready for our favorite holiday. Can you guess what it is? I'm gonna guess Halloween, how about you guys? Halloween! And can you guess what we do to get ready? We plant a jack-o'-lantern patch. A jack-o'-lantern is what people call a pumpkin that's been carved and has a face in it. First, I turn the soil with the shovel and my brother uses the spade to dig narrow rows, just one inch deep. 
Then we drop in pumpkin seeds and cover them with soil. So the first part of it is a seed. You put that in the dirt. We water them and we wait for the sun to warm them. Before long, the seeds grow tiny roots and small green shoots poke up out of the ground. So they put the seed in, they watered it and let the sun on it, and then here it comes. The tiny shoots come up first. Ooh, here's the vines that we were talking about. The shoots grow into vines and the vines grow longer. Every week we water them and pull up lots of weeds. Soon we see buds where flowers will bloom. The yellow flowers show us where our pumpkins will grow. Now when we went to the apple orchard, we learned that flowers come first and then the apples come out of there. Same with pumpkins. Oh, look at this. At first the pumpkins are green and tiny. Do you ever see a pumpkin so small that it would fit in your hand so little like that? But they grow bigger and bigger. Soon it is fall and our great big pumpkins change color from green to yellow to orange. Now they are ready to be picked. We have never grown such big pumpkins. Mom and dad help us cut the pumpkins from the vines. We gather them in a wheelbarrow and we take them home. So that's how a pumpkin grows from seed to pumpkin. Today on Facebook, your grown-up can print off these papers for you. First of all, there's a pumpkin picture. It looks like he's got a little door on him. You're gonna cut out the pumpkin and then you're gonna cut out that little door because the other page has all the different parts of the pumpkin life cycle. On this one, all you wanna do is cut out the big circle and then you're gonna attach it to your pumpkin. Now let me show you what that looks like. I printed mine out, my pumpkin, on orange paper. What this is, you can color yours orange. This is the pumpkin life cycle. Do you remember what they did first? First they took a seed and they planted it in the ground. Then sprouts came out. They watered it, they let the sun shine on it, and then they saw sprouts. What happened next? The sprouts grew and there were vines all over their garden. Do you remember what comes after the vine? There's seed, sprout, vine. Next we have a tiny little green pumpkin. But it doesn't stay tiny, right? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it changes from green to yellow to orange. And you have the pumpkins that we go out to the pumpkin patch and either pick or buy. So you guys can make one of these. What is holding it together, I have this little thing called the brad. If you don't have one of those, that's okay. Try um, a paper clip or maybe a twist tie, something to hold them together. You can see how I'm holding them together and then I can turn it and I can show people the life cycle of a pumpkin. So you guys can go and make that today. Again, it will be on Facebook for your grown up to print out. You can cut it, you can color it, and then you can put it together and have that. Now you might have been wondering what this thing is next to me. This is called a balance scale, and I made it. I'm not sure that you can see it very well, though, to do what we want to do. So let me raise it up a little bit higher. Let's get it up here so you guys can see it. There we go. Okay, so what a balance scale is. It do you ever get on the scale at the doctor's office, and he tells you how much you weigh, how big you've grown? That's what a scale does. It tells you how much you weigh and how big something has grown. A balance scale takes two things, and it compares their weight. It tells us which one is heavier and which one is lighter. So right now, you can see that my balance scale is pretty even here. The cups are pretty even. That means they're at the same height. Now, if I were to put something in there, one side might go high, one side might go low. Let's see what happens. I have little bears. Let's see what happens when I put a bear on this side. You ready? Let's predict. If I put a bear in there, are the cups gonna stay the same? Is this one gonna go up or down when I put the bear in it? What do you think? Let's find out, you ready? I put the bear in and it went down a little. That means the bear is heavier than the empty cup and it pulled it down. What do you think will happen if I put a bear on the other side? Let's try. Look at that, they're the same weight, so it balanced out. Now instead of bears, excuse me guys, I've got a couple of pumpkins. I wanna see which one is heavier. Now how will I know again which one is heavier? What will happen to the cups? The heavier one will go down and the lighter one will go up. So take a good look at my pumpkins. They're different from each other. 
This one is tall. This one is short. This one is much bumpier than this one is. What else might be different, do you think? Hmm. I can kind of feel with my hands which one I think is heavier, but since you can't feel them, what do you think by looking at them? Which one do you think is going to be heavier? Make your prediction, and then I'll put them on the scale. Is it going to be this pumpkin? Raise your hand if you think this one's heavier. Okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you think this pumpkin's going to be heavier. Okay, put your hands down and we'll find out. I'm going to try to put them in the scale at the same time. Maybe you guys can help me count this down. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, which one's heavier? The taller pumpkin was heavier. It pulled our balance scale down. So if you predicted that that one was heavier, you were right. Good predicting, boys and girls. Very nice. Now, once again, on Facebook today, you can print off your papers that look like this. And you can cut out the pumpkin, you can cut out the circle, and you can cut out the door. And then when you put them together, you will have the life cycle of the pumpkin to show to your family and to your brothers and sisters and your friends and teach them about that. You can also make your own balance scale. All I used was a yarn, a couple of cups I had, and a hanger here. You can put it on a doorknob or another knob. Just ask your grown-up where they'd like you to put it, and you can find things around your house and see which one is heavier and which one is lighter. Now, one more thing I'm going to put out on Facebook for you is a song about the life cycle of a pumpkin. I'll put a link, and your grown-up can click on the link for you and take you to the video of a song about the life cycle of a pumpkin. Next time when we get together, we are going to do a little Halloween celebration. So I will see you tomorrow for that. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.